I hate the word evangelism. And maybe, maybe hate is too strong a word, but, but for me, evangelism evokes uh, too many memories and awkward conversations with uh, door-to-door salesmen selling Jesus wholesale. But I am, I'm often so overwhelmed by the good news of Jesus Christ, too, that I, I want to share it with somebody. I want to evangelize. I need to share it because it's not just good news for me alone. It's the best news for the entire world. How can we not share that with other people? It's their news. It's their good news, too. But, and this is coming from the pastor, I don't know how. I can't just walk up to somebody and say, hey, do you know Jesus? Can I tell you about Jesus? They might look at me like I'm crazy. Yet, at PCN, one of our core values is relational gospel sharing. We know Jesus calls us to share the gospel with our neighbors. We know it. But not only that, our mission statement as a church offers that the initial sharing and connection with our neighbors is not the end of the story. Sharing the gospel leads us into relationship with other people. It invites others to be a part of our church story and for us to be a part of their story so that we can, and I quote, grow in worship, faith, and service together as a congregation. The good news of Jesus Christ doesn't make sense outside of a genuine, authentic, trusting relationship, does it? I mean, think about it with me. How can we, how can we share about love and grace and forgiveness and empathy and hope, uh, a full, whole, complete life with anybody if we don't have a real relationship with them? Why would anybody want to listen to us if it doesn't have meaningful, intentional relationship behind what we're doing and what we're saying? Because the message just seems hollow. That's why just going out and quoting the Bible is just, for most people, it doesn't mean anything. It's just words. It doesn't en- envelop what the gospel's all about. I know many churches right now are, uh, are looking for the secret knowledge to boost and grow their church membership, especially after the sobering uh, comeback from this uh, pandemic that we've been in. But of course, there is no secret, no guarantee that it's going to happen in today's world. I mean, much of the decline today has to do with a secularizing society around us. And we don't really have a lot of control over that. But what we at PCN are committed to doing is building those intentional, authentic relationships with our neighbors. That's what we've said we feel called to do. It's not about growing our church, but it's about being called by God to extend and share the grace of God. That's what we want to do to share the grace that we have been given. We want to invest in our neighbors and in our community. We want to include them, to let them know that not only do they belong here in our church community and that we accept them for who they are, but that we are better, we are stronger with them here. In fact, we need them to be the church. We feel called here at PCN to create a culture of radical hospitality where every member, every participant, every visitor can't help but share the good news with his or her neighbors, with their coworkers, with their family members, with their friends, extending kindness and welcome and invitation to join us for worship and to be part of our PCN community. We feel called to relational gospel sharing where people aren't just numbers, but are loved and are a vital part of who we are as the church. Isn't that what Jesus did for those who followed him? Didn't he help show them that they mattered, that they belonged, that they were important to what God was up to in the world, and that they were genuinely loved by God, no matter what? And I've been thinking and I've been praying a lot about this in in recent months, especially as we move forward in our uh, strategic plan for the future. We've, to this point, we've created a hospitality team to help Uh, extend the welcome and the hospitality of Jesus Christ with our visitors, to also connect members and visitors alike both to to Christ, to each other, to the life and ministry of the church. The formation of the hospitality team, oh, that's just the beginning. Even now we're developing a new life groups ministry 
and the primary purpose of this will be relational gospel sharing as we encourage the entire congregation, all of you, to be a part of this small group's ministry. We'll be hiring a new director of community life to oversee this life group ministry, but also to help the Community Life Committee discern and create new initiatives, programs, events to help us better connect with God, with each other, and with our neighbors and our community. As we reflect on old ministry activities and develop new ones, we're now going to be asking, how does this connect us with God? How does this connect us with each other? And how does this connect us with our neighbors outside of the church? Our ministries will have an outreach component to them. But push all that aside for a minute. Aside from all the strategy, the plans, the programs, and all the things that the session is doing to help lead and guide our congregation into God's vision for us, this relation, relational gospel sharing, this is the call for each of us in the church. That's right, for you, for me, and for every person that's part of this community. Each of us is called to invite neighbors to church, to be part of, of mission projects, to ministry events, to check out worship or classes online. Each of us needs to be willing to not only invite, but to shepherd and come alongside our neighbors. That's going to have the biggest impact as we seek to build up the body of Christ here in Novato, here at the Presbyterian Church. So beginning this June and throughout the summer, I want to challenge you to begin to think about how each of us can be more intentional about our relational gospel sharing. How can each of us extend the hospitality of Christ, come alongside neighbors, help them, help them experience the grace of God and Jesus Christ? Maybe this means going out of your way to greet someone you don't know in worship. Or maybe it means walking next door from your house and inviting a neighbor to join you at church on Sunday. Maybe offer them a ride. Maybe it means being more affirming uh, to those around you, intentionally sharing hope when the world seems to be falling apart. Maybe it means seeing church as less about consumerism. In other words, seeing church as less about what I get out of it, how I'm fed spiritually and more about what I can give for the sake of my neighbor. That's a different mindset. Maybe it means taking more time to fellowship after church or, or to participate in a class or on a ministry team. Maybe it means making life groups when they form a priority to give of ourselves for the sake of others, to be in relationship with other people because that's the whole point. Try it out. Take on this challenge this summer. Get out of your comfort zone a little bit and I'll do it with you. And let's see what God can do here at PCN as we are the relational gospel sharers that we've been called to be. See you next time, guys.